Hey everyone, Kyle Mike here from MLive.com. Joined by Justin Rogers. We're, we're at Ford Field. Lions opening this season in, in cer ceremonious fashion, Justin. 35-14 win against the Giants on Monday Night Football. And the Giants are going to make a lot of teams look good, I think, this year. Um, especially a lot of defenses. Um, but at the same time, in this league, you never take a, a win for granted. Especially one that was as impressive as this one. The Lions took care of business and you can't take anything away from that. Good teams got to pummel bad teams, yep. and, and that's what the Lions did today. Another thing that good teams do is, is they put teams away. And there was a, a situation in the fourth quarter where the Giants scored. They, they narrowed it to a two-score gap, and the Lions took the ball. They were, you know, doing okay on offense, but not great. And then they drive 80 yards. Matthew Stafford is perfect on the drive. Joyke Bell, who, who struggled, the running game in general struggled for the first three quarters. Joyke Bell finally puts his shoulder down, starts picking up big chunks of yards against eight-man boxes because, listen, the Giants knew the run was coming, but they, you know, they pounded out and grinded out those yards when they needed it. Not only that, they killed time, but they finished it with a touchdown and sealed the victory. And that is what good playoff football teams do. Yeah, and good playoff football teams also have good quarterbacks. And we've heard all offseason about Matthew Stafford and the evolution of Matthew Stafford. But I think you have to be legitimately excited by what you saw from him because the Giants might not be a great uh, team, but they have a pretty good defense. They have a pretty good secondary. Matthew Stafford, uh, 22 of 32, 346 yards, uh, two touchdowns, only one sack taken, zero interceptions. Zero interceptions. I think you have to be extremely pleased with his production, his efficiency. Um, we heard all offseason about how they were going to take away the risks in his game, and you definitely saw that tonight. And also, you saw some, some, some mobility on the ground, and that's something we never really saw too much previously. I asked Stafford about it after the game, if you know that, that stop and go move that we saw on that first uh, touchdown pass to, to Calvin and later on the touchdown run, if that was something new he had worked on with, with Jim Bob over the offseason or whatever. And he said, no, man, that's, that's just my only move. <laughs> and now the cat's out of the bag. But yeah, I think you'd be really pleased with, with what you saw from Stafford. You know, it, it's not the stats. We've seen monster, monster numbers from Stafford before. It was the effective throwing balls at all depths of the field. Um, his footwork was fantastic, not just on those fun little stop and go moves, but the second touchdown throw, the one to, to Calvin Johnson, was one of the best throws I've seen him ever make. He was rolling out to his left, which means that if you don't take the time to square up, you're going to throw across your body. He turned, squared his shoulders, and delivered with touch. You know, and, and yeah, Johnson had to dive for it, but that's what re is required when you've yeah. got to put it in a spot. It was a perfect throw. Stafford just has taken such a step forward. Yeah. It's one game, but yeah. uh, I mean, he played like an MVP quality candidate tonight. I mean, really that good. That was a great pass to, to, to Kelvin. Also a great catch though in the end zone sure. from Kelvin. And remember, he only had three catches against this exact same defense two two games ago in week 16 of last year. Tonight, seven catches, 164 yards, two touchdowns, the best opener in his career. And he's a guy who doesn't really buy too much into his own stats, but I asked him about like the significance of, of having um, of this being the best opener of his career, and he actually bit a little bit on it. He, was, he seemed impressed, and he seemed pleased to, to start off the season in such impressive fashion. Um, he, you can tell he just enjoys being healthy and ready to go, and I think you have a very good Kelvin Johnson going into to week two next week and get to Carolina. Kelvin Johnson's a guy they treat like a toy in a box now. You know, they, they keep him under wraps all preseason, and, and you know, I mean, he's just a really competitive driven guy. He cannot wait to get out on the field. And the older he gets, the more or the less he's allowed to do in the preseason. So the more eager he is once the season rolls around. I, I just think he was ready to explode tonight. And, and we saw that, especially, I mean, what percentage of those stats came in the first half? I, right. Almost all of them. Right. Uh, two big differences I saw with Calvin. One was him lining up all over the place. We were promised that. Second thing was he, he rested a lot more, I thought, than what he did under Jim Schwartz. I think that's just going to the, the you know, the, this is looked at as a 17-week marathon, not so much a, let's see if we can get Kelvin 300 yards in the first week of the season. Flipping around at the defense, I do want to mention those guys real quick because they did just only gave up 14 points, right? And seven of those might not have happened without a penalty on special teams. And so I think if you're very pleased, especially with DeAndre Levy, I thought he could have been a, a pro bowler last year. And he looked just as good in his opener, if not better, uh, 10 tackles and uh, just a I mean, an otherworldly interception. I have no idea how he came up with that.
He's just all over the place all the time. He his instincts are are through the roof. We've we've seen that progression from the start of his rookie season to now, and now he's just that one step closer because he's reacting more quickly to plays, and he's just building off last season. Uh, defensive line was very good too. George Johnson, the guy who came out of nowhere during training camp, one and a half sacks. Ezekiel Ansah, who barely touched the field during the preseason, four quarterback hits. They got pressure up front. The front seven was great. The secondary was up and down, but good enough. You know, mm -hmm. if the defense is going to be this good all season long, yeah. this is a team that can compete for a playoff spot. I saw it on Twitter, and I, I'm not going to cite the person because I can't remember exactly who tweeted it, but they said uh, uh, Darius Slay was up and down tonight, but compared to last year when he was only down, that's still an improvement. I, I, you did see some some growth from him. Um, real quickly, Justin, to, to cap this off, how much can we extrapolate from what we saw tonight against the Giants? How, how much can you read from this win going forward? Not a lot, but enough. You know, you can... As, as we talked about, they they did things good teams do. They finished the game off. They they soundly beat opponent in all three phases of the game. That's what you want to see. They're going down to Carolina where Cam Newton may or may not play. It's a very winnable game, especially if Newton's not out there. Green Bay and Chicago did not look great in the opening week. Minnesota did. God knows what's going on there. But, you know, the NFC North is up for grabs. The Lions have shown that they're, you know, ready to make some noise. My biggest takeaway was, you know, the, the, the defense looked good, but again, the Giants offense is pitiful. The Giants defense is pretty good. So what I take away from this game is, is the Lions offense and that they were able to dismantle, um, for lack of a better word, uh, the Giants defense. And I was really impressed with, with not just the stats of Matthew Stafford, but his game management, the fact that he was able to, to stay away from ugly mistakes. I mean, forget that he didn't have any interceptions. I don't think he put himself in a position to have an interception. I don't remember any real risky throws, and I think you'd be really pleased with what he was done, with what he did, not you know, through the air as well as on the ground. Not to make this video go ten minutes, but the biggest concern tonight for you? I mean, coming in future weeks. Uh, I think you have to be a little bit concerned about the secondary um, with with Bill Bentley. Um, he suffered a knee injury in the first half, and Caldwell did not dispel the. The notion that he could have suffered a torn ACL, which obviously would mm. sideline him for the season. Um, and the Lions only kept five cornerbacks coming into the season in the first place, so now they're down to four healthy cornerbacks. Uh, Bentley's backup is Nevin Lawson, who is not expected to have a big role on defense this year, if any kind of role on defense. But played well and tonight, surprisingly. He, he, he did, to his credit. And I asked Caldwell about that after the game. He said, you know, I want, I want to look at the tape first. But, you know, my you know first blush was he played well. He's a rookie. He's a young guy. He did some young guy things. But... Uh, you have to be pleased with what he did. Um, at the same time, when you're talking about going up against Aaron Rodgers and Jay Cutler and some of these guys you have down the road, the Lions, I think, have serious concerns in the secondary if Bill Bentley can't go because I think he's been pretty good and they were counting on him. You only have four four defensive uh, four cornerbacks. Moves are going to be made this week no matter what's going on with Bill Bentley. Sure, your, your especially with, with two inactive receivers. I mean, they could yeah. certainly, if, if Bentley's not put on IR with something serious, you know, they, we could definitely see them drop a receiver yeah. tomorrow for a defensive back. Uh, the run game bothered me. You know, they didn't get much going yeah. for for three quarters uh, I, th I thought it was kind of stagnant in the preseason as well they're just not getting the push that was there um, I think they ran a little bit better outside than inside but you know they're gonna need more push there if they're gonna want to be a balanced team which they claim they want to be which it's, it's not even a claim I mean, you have to be balanced in this league to be effective Stafford can't throw 40 50 times every game if they want to win regularly they've got to run the ball better like they did in that closing drive absolutely so we got, uh, for Justin Rogers, I'm Kyle Meinke. Big first night for the Lions. Keep it right here at MLive for all your coverage throughout the week and going into week two against Carolina.